and welcome to Skirmishes with Lot Uni. Today we have four on Westfield for you. Uh, we're going to battle Run, Dilat, Alpha One, and GNIOZ. I have no idea how to pronounce that. So we're on Westfield. There's two places to go. You can go to the north, you can go to the south. We're a kind of slow lineup, uh, going against three Cromwells and 434 85s. They don't have any eyes. Not in comparison to us, we have one light tank. So I'm going to send us to the south. And I'm going to send Slappy and our light tank to check the north, see what's there, just to make sure we don't get run over from the wrong way. And then he's going to come back to the ridge and try to spot to us, spot for us from the ridge. Um, being as fast as they are, we don't want to commit much further than the G9 area at first. Uh, we need to be able to get back to face those crown walls if they manage to sneak through and get to the cap. So that's the initial call is for most of us to stop at the little hill and try to start aiming for whatever Slappy might spot for us. Um, knowing that they're in crown walls and the crown walls are fast and they can be sneaky, we're also going to send a couple into the woods off to the left. So you're going to see coffee and mini dump go off into the woods over there. Uh, with a faster lineup, I might have sent a lot more tanks over there. That's a primo spot. Um, so right off the bat, Coffee and Mini are going over there, and they spot the Cromwells. So we're going to back off a little off the hill, and we're going to start shooting the Cromwells. Now at the same time, you saw Merrick get shot. He got shot from across the way where the 3045s got lit up. Uh, I make a call to make sure that we finish off these Cromwells. We don't want any of them left. So we start pushing across. It's kind of a mistake on my part because we are lit. And if we aren't lit, as we start crossing here, we get lit. Um, so you see me, yeah, there I get lit and I start taking shots. It took way too much damage here. And you're going to see Frost get hit. And I think Merrick took a couple shots coming across. Really, Coffee and um, Mini Dump probably could have handled that on their own. And I should have left us where we were. So we took way too much damage doing that. And Coffee and Mini clean it up. And now we need to make sure we drop our spots and reposition so that we can shoot the tanks that are across the way. And Merrick got dead and Coffee got dead. So now we are pretty even. We're up by one. We do have the light take advantage, which is nice. Um, we try to get a quick RD off on where we think they are. I don't think it did any damage. So now actually they have four tanks left. We've only spotted three of them. Uh, at this point I'm not really sure. I, I, I'm assuming they're all right there. And we find out differently a little bit later I think. And we're just going to try to snipe here based on what Slappy's spotting for us. And some of these I don't really have shots on. Um, sometimes some, some of those buildings are destructible buildings, so we might not have a shot, but we might take it anyways because they're destructible. It's kind of hard to tell from this distance, um, even in sniper mode, which apparently doesn't show up on the screen here. So we're in good shape, although we have a couple low health tanks. We have way more guns than they have. And we're going to leave... Uh, two tanks across to snipe and two tanks to go forward to try to spot and flush them out. Yeah, Slappy's been doing most of our spotting at this point, and like I said, I'm assuming that all of them are up for here together. I was miscounting my tanks. I thought there were only the two of them left, at which point I believe shortly Slappy starts getting shot and he gets shot from behind him. He doesn't get shot from the two in the city. So he lets me know that there's one behind him, and in my head, I'm thinking, okay, they're not in the city anymore. They circled behind them. I still was miscounting my tanks. So, mini dumps up in the town now. I'm going to circle down low. Slappy spots this guy. And I get some shots into him. Our guys across the hill. Sniping should be putting some shots into him. And they just finish off by Frost across the way. 
Okay, so again, we're still in good shape, although we have one, two, two one shots, and we have Frost and Touchy. I know, I think Frost got. Oh, Touchy got dead. So they killed one of our tanks across the way. So we have Frost sniping. Yeah, we have Slappy, who's hopefully a two shot. I am a one, maybe two shot if they low roll, and Mini's definitely a one shot. Frost still has maybe three quarters of his health, so he's in good shape, but he's not over here hunting. Here we go, we finally spot one. Put a shot or two into him. Now Mini dumps closer, he's gonna start moving in. Frost is positioned to get some shots on him. Slappy's gonna circle around wide. Then we spot the second one right there. And instead of going around up top and have them know where I am, I'm gonna go down the bottom. They don't know where I am at this point, so I'm gonna sneak up on them. Pretty sure they're looking at mini dump, maybe at Slappy. And Frost is still trying to push shots into them from across. They destroy mini dump, Slappy gets some shots into them. I come up from behind. And fired too early, missed my shot, and therefore died. But they got uh, uh, Slappy got a shot in, I think uh, Frost got a shot in. So now it's two on one. He's definitely a one shot. Frost is a two shot, it's like he's a two shot. So again, we're in good shape here. Frost should have shots from there and takes one and sends one on. So that was a nice game. Now we're go, go, going to go right into our next game on Westfield. Uh, we're gonna start on the other side and we have six 30, 45s and a 50-2. Going against an OI, uh, two light tanks, including one of the new wheeled ones and a TD. Um, we have some substitutes in that hadn't really done much skirmishing with us. Um, E-Priv is new to the clan. He's driving our light tank. And Frost, Frostation is in a 30-45. He's done a couple with us tonight only. Um, not very many. Uh, it's his first night. And Skynet Steel, who hasn't scrummed with us in months. Also Merrick, who rarely skirmishes with us, but is quite an accomplished player. So here we go. Uh, we're going to do pretty much... No, I guess we're not doing the same thing. We're not sending anybody to the south. So we're all going to come play the ridge. Uh, the city and the ridge is really the call. You see a couple peel off to play the south. Touchy's got really good spotting range, so he's going to try to park in a bush and start spotting from there. Coffee's coming up with us. Frost, Skynet, Merrick, me. And Eprim's doing a little scouting run in the middle. He runs into their 50-2 and their OI, and he spots the SU. Now, the SU and the OI were pretty predictable locations. I'm surprised the two light tanks were over here. That's actually good for us. <clears throat> Although, I put out a warning to the guys. Beware the 3045s being on the other ridge and shooting us as we get spotted. Party's up, and I pause here, and I try to find a target. I don't see anything I can target. So Eprev stopped playing with the other light tanks. He came down with us. He's going to try to put himself in a position where he can spot the ridge. And we're kind of just exploring right now. And 50-2 is playing around, trying to light us. And he lights me. So I back up a little bit. I'm trying to be conscious of where that SU is. And we're really clustered right now, so it's good that we weren't spotted, because uh, skirmish artillery can do a number on you. Now we're just kind of waiting for things to play out, see what happens. The wheeled guy makes himself seen. We try to get some shots in. I don't get there quite quick enough, and it doesn't look like anybody gets a shot at him. So now it looks like the AMD is going towards the uh, middle, maybe to the ridge. Our T50-2 should spot them. OK, 
okay, he sees him climbing up the other side, but we're kind of engaged over here. And a 50-2 is playing with us. I fire and miss. I believe he spots me, and in return, do I get shot by the SU? Not yet. Yes, there we go. Thought I was protected by the house, backed up a little too far. And the first 3045 finally makes himself shown. It's been a while since we've seen the OI. There's another 3045 up with the SU. Um, we lose our 50 2, so now we're without eyes. And they still have both of theirs. Although there goes the wheeled guy, making touchy. 3045 trying to climb up the hill. We get some shots into him. And touchy finishes him off. Now we got one to our left. I get a shot, take a shot. I get shot by the OI who's made his way around to our backside. And we got the 3045 over there. So we're not playing our normal coordinated effort here. We're kind of all spread out. Um, they have a guy on our base that Touchy's going to take care of. He tells us not to worry about it. And the SU-100 gets lit up. I tell everybody to get shots on the SU to take him out. So we got Coffee, we got Merrick, both shooting him. Coffee gets distracted by the guy shooting him from behind. Somebody's bouncing AG off of him. Touchy finishes off, I'm sorry, Cross finishes off 3045. Merrick here is still shooting at the SU. But now we're running out of tanks, and we have that OI behind us and the 3045 behind us. And Touchy's a little bit out of position to help us. He's coming up, but he's, he's getting there. So we lose sight of the SU and decide we're going to focus on the OI and the 3045. At this point, the OI fire takes out Merrick. And Skynet and Touchy should be concentrating on the OI since he just fired. Or take, the, take out the one shot. Now they're both one shots. Skynet's one shot. Touchy takes out the 3045. And then takes out the OI. Oh, there's the SU, and Frost with the shot at the SU. Notice he's getting shot from behind. Um, there's a tank on the ridge. They still have their 50 2. Now I'm going to fast forward a little bit because 3045 is chasing the 50 2. Can take forever. Um, Frost starts out by heading that way, and we decide to put him on. Actually, he decides on his own to go after the cap. Skynet gets a nice shot on him moving. And once this 50 2 disappears, we're way slower than him, so uh, Frost goes to cap. Touchy's going to try to chase him down, and Skynet, we try to get Skynet to cut him off. I love the sound in fast forward mode. So he can, at this point, he can keep running all he wants. He's not going to, likely not going to get back to cap. Touchy's still going to try to cut him off. We get Frost to get behind the house. So in case the 50-2 does make it there, he's not going to get killed, and he doesn't make it there, and we win the battle. And right into our next one. Look, it's Westfield again. This time we're facing a KV-85 and an OI, and another and the SU again. It's a different plan, similar setup. Uh, we're running all 3045s except for 130-01P, and we have Sergeant Coffee in his Type 64. And pretty much the call is the same. Uh, we're going to go play the ridge in the city, and we're going to send a light tank to scout to the north. And they've got the Cromwell and the one-wheeled tank. 
I actually expected to see a lot more of the wheel tanks tonight. Um, we didn't see quite as many like uh, as I expected. We saw a, a few. Um, definitely not in the numbers that I kind of expected. And because they're so fast, uh, they need to be accounted for in that it's risky to go too far away from your cap when you're in slow tanks. Um, so like we are, we're in the 3045s. If our type's not going to be able to get back, we need to take that into account. We don't want to get overcommitted. That doesn't really become an issue in this one, but just talk, talking strategies. So we have Tachi and Mini Dump down in the valley hiding in trees. Uh, the rest of us are coming up on the city a little further north, hoping to not get spotted. And coffee is way up north. We spot the uh, wheel tank, the AMD. And we find the OI right here in front of us. So I don't know what the OI was thinking. Was he going to snipe from there? Boy, that would have been a pain. Um, So we got a couple of us in the OI right now. And then somebody spots the KV and the SU, but we're gonna keep focusing the OI. Um, I have the RD, so I'm gonna try to land an RD on them. And they're all moving around pretty good. I think I launched the RD anyways, but it was a low percentile chance because they're all moving around. Can't decide which one, I finally let it go. And get back, get myself back in the battle. And lo and behold, I can't drive worth darn. So I put myself on my side. We're up 3-0 at this point, which is good because I asked Frost to come tip me back over so I can get in the battle. So and now we're up 4-0. And Frost and I are pretty much going to spend the rest of the game trying to get me, me righted. And the rest of the team is going to win this for us. Uh, they spot the Cromwell. And the Cromwell's fast enough that if he could get himself unlit, he could have gotten out of trouble, but he doesn't get unlit, he gets dead. We spot there, 3001P. And just like in pubs, when they're all lined up on the ridge, once you get spotted on the other ridge, they're just going to decimate you unless you can get into cover. And there's not much actual cover over there. He tries to make a run for it. Uh, meanwhile, Coffee spotted their 3045 over here. <clears throat> oh, and finally I'm free of my accident. Uh, I'm going to head over for the 3045 while these snipers keep trying to do their sniping job. Mini Dump's almost full health. Touchy's almost full health. So Mini Dump runs over to try to get a spot on him. Hodat runs out on the railroad bridge. I think Frost is coming with me. Coffee tries to be a hero here. This is a really good position for any tank that gets in it, the 3045. Um, it takes a lot to dig them out, so the type was at a disadvantage to begin with, and the position didn't help much. I run in, I get a shot, and I'm on the move, so I auto-aim. Uh, Frost gets a shot, and I finish him off. And now all that's left is the Cromwell, which dies very shortly here. So another one on Westfield. And now I didn't cherry pick these. I didn't wasn't picking wins and losses. I just picked all the Westfield maps. Um, and in this one, I think you're gonna see what happens when it doesn't go as well as planned. We did fairly well on those other ones. Actually, we had a really good night overall. Uh, we ran 70% for the night win rate, so that was pretty good. Um, I think, and I sh I'm showing you these Westfield games in order. I think part of this was we had done so well, I went into it a little overconfident in my calling. Um, we've got a really good group of guys that have been playing really well. And we have two light tanks. This time, two light tanks with 53045s. And they've got a KV2, an ARL. Not a really afraid of the ARL, more afraid of the KV2. Um, don't get me wrong, the ARL's a decent tank and it's going to damage us, but the KV2 is going to take us out with one or two shots. Way too much damage there. So we all run to the north again. We're going to send one far north. We're going to send one 
closer to the ridge. Right off the bat, we spot the ARL. And my early thinking is, okay, the two heavy tanks probably spawned up here. Uh, they're going to be isolated. Let's try to get to them. Um, I probably called that sooner than I should have. <clears throat> now we spot a Cromwell down low. And the battle ensues. Now at this point, I've called the ARL as a target. One thing if you want to notice, not everybody comes over to get the ARL with us. Uh, myself and Mini Dump come over, and I think the guys behind us peel off and go after the KV-2. And that hurts us a little bit. Uh, that's not really the end-all be-all of this battle. It was the fact that I called to come over here. We were going after the ARL, the 3045 shows up. Uh, we probably should have backed off at this point, because now the 3045 is supported by the ARL. ARL supported by the KV-85, or by the 3045. And even that KV-2 at this point can support them. Um, so as you see, I get shot by the ARL. And I'm just up to be with Mini. And somehow they landed their arty strike on me, so now we're down two tanks. Um, that was really painful. And now we're kind of all spread out. And we're not shooting one target. Um, Frost is shooting behind us. And, um, Bodak shooting in front of us. Now they both focus behind them, but it's too late. So we got all discombobulated there. We can play our usual combined tactics. We got separated to focus. And you see what the end result of that was. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the views I get. Um, I love doing this. I love tier 6 skirmishes. It's what I got into the game for. Watching the professionals play the 7v7 format um, with the strategy and the tactics involved. Um, you can depend on your teammates, hopefully, and sometimes even the enemy's predictable. I love sharing it with you guys. I hope that my insights have helped your game somewhat or helped your strategies or your tactics. Um, I hope it doesn't help you against us, but I hope it helps you overall. And again, thank you for watching, and see you on the battlefield.